Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. Today we're going to look at Frame.io, which we took a look at a few weeks ago with Sam Messman. But Mark wants to show us the collaborative aspects, actually the software itself. Yeah, actually, yeah. You, d you guys did look at the app that, that is um, launches automatically when you uh, have it installed so that when you're in Final Cut Pro, it's a share destination. So you can share to Frame.io and it pops a little app and you can add metadata and do a lot of great things with it. But there's a whole another aspect of the collaborative editing process where you can use it as a review tool uh, that we have been using and Ripple Training has been using it. It's just great. It's really saved us a lot of time in the review process. Yeah, tons of time. No more spreadsheets, no more downloading files. We just do it all here now. It's yeah. fantastic. So I've been very happy with this, so I thought it'd be worth, I think you guys might find it useful too. So if at frame.io.com, or uh, sorry, it's frame.io, no, frame frame .io. Io. Yes. Um, this is what the interface looks like. At the left-hand side, this is our Ripple account, so there's Ripple there. If I click on that, it'll close the projects. These are, are some open projects that we're working on right now, and adding a project as simple as clicking there, and you can add a project depending on your plan, and we'll talk a little bit more that, about that later. Uh, you can also hide all those projects by clicking these three dashes up there. And then here we have a bunch of clips we've already added to this project. You can add more clips, by the way, not just by sharing from Final Cut Pro 10, but you can drag and drop uh, existing files. Right, a whole, ba whole bunch of them, just drag yeah. them right into that yeah. window. H.264, if they're ProRes, it'll keep them as ProRes, but you can, it'll also create uh, H.264s for playback for you. And you can create folders. Here we have a folder here that has an additional set of movies in it. So pretty flexible there. Uh, you can also share files. So rather than having somebody collaborate, in other words, having somebody use this interface in order to make comments and review, if you just want to send a link to have them see the file by itself, you can click this button right here and you would enable sharing by turning it on. And then it would provide you a URL that you could copy the URL. You could choose whether it's password protected and whether they could download the file or not. And then also give it some branding colors uh, particular to your, you know, your company. Nice. So nice, nice feature there. You can hide those settings and I'll click out of that. You can throw files away, of course, and there's where you can create your folders. At the right-hand side are a couple of useful tools. This AZ is a sorting, and I have these sorted by name because we have these lessons for our tutorial. These are actually lessons for our getting started in production tutorial. Mm -hmm. And we used Frame.io to review those lessons. Uh, one thing I would love is if once you choose a sorting options, if it would stay that way for that particular project. Right, you have to reset it every time you yeah. jump back in. Yeah, oh, well. and if you got a lot of projects, you kind of have to a little bit of a right. annoyance, but not a big deal. Then there's a settings menu here where you can name or rename your project and choose who gets notified, uh, you know, everyone or just me, depending on whether there's new comments or new media or somebody else joins the project, you can get notified. And then uh, if you do get notified, this little guy up here with the lightning bolt will show you if you have notifications. It'll light up. Yeah, you'll get an email and that'll be lit up. And so you, if you log back into Frame.io, you'll see, oh, in this project, uh, somebody has left comments on these seven movies. So it's time for me to get busy reviewing those comments and making my, my edits, right? So then at the right-hand side, at the top is myself. I'll come back to that. There's some different things you can do in there. And then there's our list of collaborators. So collaborators are people who can see particular projects. And who you've invited. And who you've invited. Yeah, there are team members and their collaborators. Team members see every project. So there's right. a Ripple team. Right. But you can invite a collaborator who only sees that, that particular proje project. Oh, got it. And then they can look at the project. They can add notes to it and, and do what we're going to show in just a minute. Adding a collaborator simply is clicking this button and adding an email address. Then that collaborator does have to register with Frame.io, but they don't pay anything. Right. They just have to be registered. So. Um, the clips themselves, what's really nice is there's clip skimming. Yeah, skimmer. There's yeah, just, skimmer like, just like the skimmer, you can skim through and see the content right away before you decide which clip to look at. You can see the titles of the clips, the size of them, and whether there's comments. So I see this one here. There's 10 comments. 10 comments. Okay, well, I'm going to double click on that one, and that'll bring it up, and it'll start to cache it. Okay. And I'm going to pause playback right here. And uh, at the top left, we can download that if we wanted to. Sure. Uh, to have a local copy. And at the top is not just the name of this clip, but it also says version one and that it was posted 13 days ago and who posted it. Right. So good information there, uh, as well as if there were other versions, you could see them here. 
How would you get another version? How would it know there's another version? So this is what's really cool. If the, if, if you have a, an edited project and you post a version and then somebody makes comments and you make a new version, you can upload a new version and then in the first screen, you just drag that new version on top of the old version and it'll put them together in that same container. Interesting. So then when you're in this view, those versions are available from this pop-up menu. It could be one, two, three versions. And yeah. Is yeah. there a split screen function you can compare like shots? You can. You can actually uh, hit the S key. There's keyboard shortcuts that will enable a split screen. I don't have okay. a separate version here. But that fact that you can do it is pretty cool. Yeah. It's really nice to be able to do that. So on the right here, we have comments, which you can show or hide. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a set of another set of settings here where there's if you don't like colors like if you're doing critical color correction you don't like the purple in here you can choose a grayscale mode which just gets rid of some of the colors in here i don't I see like a, it doesn't see a lot of it i kind of like it yeah the way it is um so these comments here above them you can show some additional info about the clip it's codec and resolution and frame rate and then these clips have already been commented on. In fact, you see they're all struck through. Stru yeah, struck through, uh, struck so through. I, yeah, so these are clips I've made comments. You can see the time code for each of the comments. And if you click these three dots, we can see uh, they've been marked complete. Which, so, which created the strike through. Right, so if I chose unmarked complete, then it okay. looks like it needs to be done. So the editor, once they read the comments and they take care of them, they just mark them as complete and work through it. That's perfect. And then they know it's done, I know it's done, everybody knows that that particular thing's been addressed. And what's kind of neat is if you notice there's little, uh, these little markers along the bottom, little white hashtags. Ooh, as you hover over there with your mouse, it jumps to that comment right in the panel. Yep, so one way to, uh, to find a comment is just to move to one of those and you see exactly what that comment is. I could click on it and it jumps to that. Or you could click a comment over on the right and the, the playhead will jump to that. Uh, by the way, this player you can, uses JKL. JKL. So, okay. Yeah, so, and you can tap L a few times to play fast or faster, so you can speed I, I, I should play. point out that having a fast connection, at least with this version, is kind of important. Yes. They're, they're, uh, I heard from Emery that they're working on giving you the ability to kind of step down the quality at some point. Okay, for, 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 for slower, slower connections, connections. Right, right. 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 So um, if you wanted to add a comment in here... Oh, look, there's a split screen. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but if you wanted to add a, add a comment anywhere, let's just move along somewhere. So let's say this shot right here... I'm make the say, sky bluer. Yeah, okay. Make sky bluer. And I can add that comment. But before I do, I want to point out this little paintbrush because um, if I click on that, I get some options here. I get some color options. Better make it red. <laughs> and uh, I get some different drawing tools. Nice. So. I can say, you know, if, if, if it wasn't clear <laughs> what sky it was, that's the sky here. Okay? Exactly. But I've actually been using a lot of these in our screenshots to highlight a section like, uh, hey, you know, clone fix out this the part truck. here. Clone yeah. out the truck. Yeah, I'll get, yeah, get <laughs> rid of this truck get over rid here. of the truck. <laughs> yeah, I'll get rid of that here. That's get rid funny. of the truck. Yeah. And get rid of truck. And get... Good luck with that, by the way. <laughs> with, that, with that fence in the way. That's right. a, that'll be a challenge. That's be fun. Okay, so I'll click Submit. Uh -huh. And that comment gets added right there, and we can see it there ready to go. So um, super easy. One thing I would like, and, and the, the Emery uh, who runs for MAO said they'll add this in a future version, is making it clear that the comments are done. Like when I'm commenting on a video, it's, you know, how would the editor know that I'm done reviewing? What if I took a break? Right. So what I do right now, I have my last comment says, End of comments. End of comments. Yeah, right. but they'll they'll institute something where you can sort of do a checkbox that like, yeah, I finished my review. Fantastic. And now I'm passing it off to the editor or to another person to review. So because you can have comments from any number of reviewers here. <laughs> the account executives. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> so actually, some you know, yeah, producers and clients will love this. Editors may hate it <laughs> because they can draw over the screen. <laughs> they can draw stuff. And they can easily make tons of comments. <laughs> yeah. So it could be like, okay, everybody wants to go ahead and make their comments on your video now. But we've found it as a really indispensable tool uh, for reviewing the tutorials. I mean, we've started using it for all the tutorials, right? You're using yeah. it with uh, all your editors and different projects. What, is, what are the pay, payment tiers? Sure, so let's go back to that. If I click on my name up here, there are some account settings and uh, product update information if there's something new. The support fact is pretty good, the FAQ. Uh, but if I go to upgrade, it brings up the different options. There's monthly and yearly options, and there's a free option. So if you just have one project, you want to try it out, it's totally free. Right. So great for a single project, $15 a month for three projects, $25 a month for unlimited projects, and, and 50 gigs, I guess, at a time, because you can delete yeah, old projects sure. out of there. 
But so still, $25 I, a month for just the amount of time it saves is, a, to me, a no-brainer. Yeah, I, I mean, I would say in a normal tutorial where I've got to review 15 movies, a couple of hours of movies, this probably saves me a couple of hours in that process of going okay. through and taking notes, of not needing to switch back and forth and write down time code oh, and I figure know. out where stuff oh, is. It's, so. it's, this is this is a fantastic idea. Very very cool. Very tool. Very, very useful. Well, excellent. Well, thanks for taking us into the busty innards. So my Star Wars reference again uh, of Frame IO. Um, really useful. Hope you check it out. Download the free one. Um, thanks for watching. Matt Break. Check us out on Twitter, Facebook. We have lots of new tutorials coming out. DaVinci Resolve, Adobe. We got some an awesome Final Cut tutorial he's working on. Uh, we're we're very busy. So thanks again for watching us on YouTube. We appreciate your support. See you next week.